Uh, my name is uh, Dylan Thomas. I am from the Lyoxin First Nations. My uh, traditional name is Quilt Phelum. Um, I am a Coast Salish artist and I have been doing uh, Salish art uh, flick formally, meaning uh, kind of dedicating uh, most of my time to it uh, for I think 12 years now. Um, I um, Apprentice under Randy Cook and Delmar Johnny from Cowichan, and Randy sorry Randy is from is a Kwakwakiwak artist, but he was able to uh, he was able to kind of take me through how I needed to study Salish art, so bring me the books and the archives and things like that, and then also him being a very skilled artist, one of the most skilled I'd say, um, he was able to teach me uh, a lot of ways to look at art and how to refine your art and the things you need to be thinking about uh, design aesthetically. Um, so even though he's not Salish, um, that time, the time I spent with Randy was like invaluable. I, I don't think I would be an artist today if I didn't get a chance to apprentice under Randy. Uh, I grew up in a house that was just, the walls were covered with native art and I was super inspired by that and used to draw from like a young age, like five years old. My parents still have some like sketches I did when I was really young. <laughs> and um, um, But I was also like really into illustration and things like that. Um, and it wasn't until my apprenticeship where I started focusing solely on Salish art and then began taking my uh, art practice more seriously. And um, I started off actually training in jewelry, which probably wasn't the best move. It, it was like, I spent a lot of time dedicated to craft rather than design work. And then when I started working, I, I worked with Randy full time for six months. And uh, during that six months, I did two prints and that was kind of my um, uh, my uh, start into the um, like the fine art world. So selling to galleries and things like that. And those two prints were um, uh, Sacred Cycle, um, which was a, a geometric piece with three salmon going in a circle, and then um, Salmon Spirits, which was my first tessellation. Mm -hmm. A huge MC Escher fan before I really started with uh, um, doing uh, Salish art and so I remember thinking looking at Escher's work when I like discovered him in high school I remember thinking I'm like that would really work with Northwest Coast art because of um, the the all the characters are like really sharply defined and it works in like flat colors and mm -hmm. there were just so many elements of Escher's work that I thought would transfer over. So I had that seed in my mind uh, when I was 16 before I even knew I was going to be a Salish artist and then when I started that was like uh, I got to work on trying to figure out how to do a tessellation right away. There, I also uh, learned about uh, Islamic tessellations and started studying them and uh, learned later actually that in Islamic tessellations were what inspired Escher to do his work. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, there's something so cool about yeah, the way they fit together and um, uh, just, to, yeah, the, the, strange, the strange way that um, you take the one shape and then it expands out and expands out and expands out and um, that it just works together. It creates this harmony that's just uh, hard to explain really. Uh, but um, there's something something really amazing and uh, it, there are tessellations I feel are like those kind of, uh, it's the kind of art that you can look at at first and you get like a general sense of the piece and then you look at it closer and you just see more and more as you look at it because the geometry uh, does so many cool things naturally that uh, that makes the piece a lot more dynamic than um, a piece of art where you look at it for a minute and you kind of took it in all in right away. Like I said, I, I, I really enjoyed Escher's work, so I just saw that and there was something so cool uh, about how it worked and uh, um, I thought there was something just inherently beautiful about geometry and the way that, the, the order that appears out of, uh, out of utilizing geometry and it's, re it's really strange to look at um, some of Escher's work and see how um, each uh, each shape defines the shapes next to it and things like that and I just found it really intriguing from like a intellectual standpoint and very like uh, 
uh, aesthetically pleasing. Um, and then once I started studying Salish art, I realized that geometry was a, an important part of Salish art in itself. Um, Salish art is there are a few examples of simple tessellations, that wasn't their main focus, but things like rotation symmetry, uh, reflection symmetry, and radial symmetry, which are, um, uh, for uh, a reflection symmetry just means it's mirrored across one or more lines. Uh, so if uh, the left side is identical to the right side, um, reflection, I mean, uh, rotation symmetry is when an image rotates around a central point. So like the yin yang of Taoism is a, a rotational symmetry because the shape is rotated around itself. And then um, radial symmetry is like uh, how most flowers look with their petals um, being um, going around a central point um, or a snowflake uh, when you see a, like a snowflake under a microscope and it comes into those it, it naturally forms into like a six uh, fold radial symmetry piece so um, or like how a child usually draws a sun with those uh, points coming off at those things so those techniques are found all throughout Salish art and um, once I started studying uh, Salish art, I became more fascinated with geometry, but I do feel like it was just kind of a natural thing I was attracted to from day one. Um, yeah, so it was, uh, it just kind of, uh, once I got studying, it just seemed like that was the avenue I wanted to explore. And then as that happened, I, it, my love for geometry just got deeper and deeper and deeper. And to this day, I still love it and uh, now study uh, traditional forms of geometry from like all around the world, not just Salish art, and it's been uh, my inspiration is a lot more um, widespread than when I first started, and it's uh, still I still get that uh, same feeling that I got when I first saw Escher when I was 16, where it's like just a, a, a sense of awe, really. Um, yeah, I guess just uh, if you are inspired by uh, mathematics and geometry, just uh, stick at it and like kind of dig into it because there is just so much to study. Um, once I started branching out and uh, kind of started studying other traditional forms of geometry, I was just so inspired. It feels like, you know, I have my Salish uh, lineage, like that I'm carrying on a tradition in my Salish background, but there's also... Uh, uh, a lineage that's larger than that, which I think is geometric art, because if you go, if you look at Tibetan mandalas or Islamic tessellations or um, just any, like, lots of symbols, like I said earlier, like the Taoist yin yang or the Buddhist dharma wheel or the Star of David is a radial symmetry symbol. Um, all these cultures around the world um, use geometry in their symbolism and in their art, and I just find that really cool and uh, um, I feel really connected to other artists from around the world through that. And uh, even one of the earliest uh, art, uh, pieces of artwork ever found, which I think was created by Homo erectus, so a pre-Homo uh, sapien hominid, um, was a, a bunch of zigzagging lines uh, carved into a mussel shell, which was 500,000 years old. And um, uh, not only that, not even kind of human artifacts, but if you look at nature, you're going to see all these things like radial symmetry, rotation symmetry. Um, there seems to be some sort of uh, uh, cosmic tendency to go towards these forms that uh, the geometry plays an important role in like uh, botany, uh, like biology, uh, even cosmology, the way galaxies and things swirl around each other, take on these uh, um, logarithmic spirals and rotation symmetry and things like that. So um, if you are interested in, there's just endless uh, areas that you can study and just keep getting inspired.